we'll be underway here shortly. Between playing Esper Humans in Indianapolis and now two Gitaxian Pros in his death late list, I'm going to be starting the Bernie fan club pretty soon. Yeah? Yeah, he's yeah. quickly becoming one of my favorite players on, at least in the Midwest Open Series. I like the cut of his jib. So we see a misty rainforest to start the show here. Gitaxian Pro, oh, 18. Mm. Getting ready to write it all down. You got to be thrilled right now. Mm. Now that said, I'm not that thrilled with pairing Gitaxian Pro with this many thought seasons because of the life total. I'd probably move one of his three thought seasons into uh, an Inquisition, for example, but okay. his heart's in the right place. See a hand here of Spell Pierce. Stoneforge, Mystic Source of Plowshares, Brainstorm, Arid Mesa, and a Wasteland for these players. So you see one's I wonder if that knowing down. about that Wasteland is going to help inform Bernie on what lands he should be fishing <laughs> for. It's anyone's <laughs> guess. It's really anyone's <laughs> guess. I think it's a draw card. Wow, that is yeah, even that is unbelievable. I think he drew another Gitaxian probe. I'm not positive. You are a real innovator. I got to give it to you. Creeping Tar Pit going to start the show. Maybe he's perfectly fine with that being wastelanded. Perhaps. We'll see. Ponder Only he knows. Chris that's, certainly doesn't. That's he doesn't true. Have, he's not armed with his own Gitaxian probe. That's true. See how Van Meter wants to go about these next couple of turns here. Does have a Ponder. Can leave up some mana for swords or counter spells. Can also just try to resolve Stoneforge Mystic right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of decisions. If only he was working with more information. <laughs> if there was only some way. <laughs> so you just, I'm telling you, he should just play 64 cards. That's probably easiest. Yeah. It's basically free, so. It is essentially free. Yeah. And Bernie's deck looks very nice. Uh, I saw a couple beta tundras floating out in his hand there. Oh, wow. Van meter, going to sacrifice Misty Rainforest. Looks like he's going to go for Stoneforge Mystic this go around. He's not going to be baited into a wasteland. Is Mystic okay? You know I have it. From your Gitaxian probe. <laughs> the answer is yes. So we'll see what equipment Chris does search out. He's going to go and get Batter Skull. So this is really interesting thing I've been realizing over the course of Legacy at the beginning of this year and the back end of last year. I feel like players are very trained to go get Batter Skull at Stoneforge Mystic. Mm -hmm. And to me, it seems like they should be searching for a sword or, or Jite more. Because I think a lot of the times, especially with how, you know, how much, how many copies, excuse me, of Stoneforge Mystic are running around right now, people are just trying to make sure that Stoneforge Mystic, sure, it resolves, but you just kill it so the Battle School gets stranded in the hand. Mm -hmm. And I think that it would be better if they actually just were able to cast their equipment, especially when they have True Name in their deck. And True Name is so much better when it's holding a sword or Jite as opposed to a Battle School because it's more realistic for you to pay those equip costs. Yeah, I, I, I do wish that some of these decks actually had a sword because both... Jitte and both Jitte and Batter Skull are kind of predicated on your Stoneforge or one of your early creatures surviving. And Jitte isn't necessarily good against all the control decks, where Sword is powerful in a game that gets drawn out and yeah. is castable. So, and we saw that in the last round too. It wasn't. I feel like this is just something that's happening so much now. Because yeah. uh, surprise, surprise, Sword's on Stoneforge Mystic. Now you're stranded with a Batter Skull. I mean, yes, you do have a Batter Skull in your hand for when you do make it to the mid and late stages of the game. But I think the goal. Uh, for Bernie at that point is, yeah, when you finally do get the five mana, I'm just going to have a way to deal with your Batter Skull. I'm not going to care. And I, I honestly feel like, you know, it's very rare nowadays that we see a st turn two stone four, turn three, put my Batter Skull in, turn four. You can't win anymore. Oh, no, I totally agree. I think it has to be part of a, of a larger puzzle. And it's different with the Esper Blade decks because they're trying to run someone out of resources. With the blue-white red deck, it's, you know, getting into five mana is not happening in a high percentage of games. And especially when they have... You know, when you're playing like a Bullet Red Mirror, for example, they have Swords and uh, and Bolt. So I can't imagine your 1-2 living very long. So I don't know. It's just something it's, that I've kind of noticed as you can see Van Meter pick up another copy of Stoneforge Mystic. So he's going to be able to play and resolve that. You see Bernie going to take a look at his hand. Says that's good to go. And we'll see what equipment he does search for here. I think he's only got left in Umzawa Shijite. Yeah, he's got one left, and then he's got some other equipment in his sideboard. When we do get to the sideboard of games, we will talk about that. But Shijite going to go to the grip. As good as a card as Batter Skull is, and there's obviously no denying how powerful that card is, might be time maybe to search up a little something different. It's only good once it's in play. That's accurate. <laughs> that is very accurate. If it never gets in play, it's like you didn't do anything. 
So we'll see if Bernie has a way to kill the Stoneforge Mystic. Of course, he can't cut him off of white with two Tundras. Thoughtseize time. So you see a hand of Spell Pierce, Sword Supply Shares, two pieces of equipment. That Stoneforge will be able to search up, and an Arid Mesa. Bye bye, Batter Skull. Really good Batter Skull this game. Yeah. Bernie all the way down to 14 now from self-inflicted damage. Yeah, this is something that you mentioned at the top, too, where when you have probe side by side with Thoughtseize, you know, there's a, a lot of damage. That's a lot. Yeah, you're dealing a lot to yourself, yeah. especially when you're playing a deck that does have reach and four lightning bolts. Yeah. Scrubland maybe the choice of the day. You said these are baited. Oh, uh, I misidentified. That's well, I my actually, fault. I actually don't know. You would know much so, so much better than me. Those are four and black borders. Okay. Yep. Are those worth more or less than beta? They're worth less. Okay. I'm not good with the whole the whole beta revised alpha. I have no idea about this sort of stuff. Well, beta versus alpha, you can't really tell from afar because okay. it's it's just the corners that are a little bit different. Okay. But four and black border, there's just way more text in the text box. Force of will to draw here for Van Meter. For what it's worth, I accept your apology. Yep. There's definitely an apology in earnest. <laughs> See what Van Meter wants to do here. You see, he's looking at that hand of Spell Pierce, Force of Will. Gotham Mazawashite, his last equipment left. Still holding on to that sword. Could take her a Death Right Shaman if he wants to. Could fire for Wasteland, but I doubt that will occur. So we'll see. Well, I like him trying to leverage his mana advantage a little bit here now that uh, he has a Spell Pierce in hand. Not advantage, but the Pierce gets better the less mana Bernie has, of course. I'm not sure how much Van Meter really wants to hold on to that land now that the, he's discarded that Batter Skull. We could see him get a little crazy, right? And just go, you know, like Wasteland you, Wasteland you, Sword your Death Right, try to cut your mana. Oh, that's, sure. That's not what's going to happen now, but that, could, that was a line of play available to him if he really wants to get him. See, Van Meter's going to sacrifice Aired Mesa. Going to go get a land out of his deck. Volcanic Island, the choice of the day. Yeah, but I really like going... I think I, I really like going beat down on Bernie's mana here. Feels like that's what we're going to see. Yep, Swords or Death Right. So there goes the 1 2. Bernie going to go up to 14. And then Van Meter going to fire off a wasteland, take care of the creeping tar pit. So this is what you wanted to see. Yep. I like this line of play from Chris. It puts a lot of pressure on Bernie to have a removal spell. And even in that world, if Chris is feeling so inclined, he can force it and try to just win this way. See, a couple copies of Wasteland here in Wensham. And you see Van Meter, of course, leaving Stoneforge missed it up so it can slide through and was out not open it up to counter magic. There is the Wasteland. This is a brainstorm to start things off. See Van Meter going to take a look. Could slide in GTA right now. Could could spell pierce this. Could cast Force of Will on it if he senses weakness. Yeah, I prefer doing nothing, which is what it appears Chris decided to do. It's always tempting to want to counter one of those brainstorms. Yeah. It being arguably the best card in Legacy and all. But in this spot, you know, you want to save your Pierce probably to actually protect your Stoneforge Mystic. Bernie can also just pay. And it's not clear. It's not one of these matches where you connect once with your Jitte and you run away with the game. Yeah. It's very strange to me that people consider, you know, Brainstorm to be the best card, one, the best or one of the best cards in Legacy, yet it's almost correct always to not counter it. I think it doesn't get countered often enough, but a lot of it depends on context. Part of it is just so hard to fight over in a lot of spots. Wasteland going to take care of Volcanic Island. Umzawashi going to slide through. Van Meer is going to start his turn off with a Ponderu. So hit one, two, and three. You see Delver. You see it looks to be a Scalding Tarn and another copy of Spell Pure. So we'll see what Chris wants to do here. He could set up a Delver to flip, or he could take a land, equip the GTA, and start getting some counters on his equipment. I think Chris also correctly suspects that he can't just put 
Chute on the on the Stoneforge Mystic can run away with the game. He needs to set up a slightly better board, give himself a more, little more resiliency against potential removal spells that Bernie could have access to. Oh, there's your Delver's Secrets. And likely to have a spell pierce on the top of his deck to flip the Delver, to start getting in the air. And just actually kind of having the Jute there is this kind of thing that, uh, that Bernie has to be scared of the entire time. Mm -hmm. As when is going to draw a copy of Wasteland here. Now, he himself could try to cut off Chris from Mana here if he has additional Wasteland in hand. If he had a removal spell for the Delver Secrets, he could be in really good shape. Show me a Spell Pierce is what Delver Secrets is going to do. Going to flip into Insectile Aberration. Spell Pierce going to go to the grip. You see Van Meter's hand right now. Double Spell, spell, double spell Pierce, excuse me, and Force of Will. So in comes Chris for four points of damage. Bernie going to go down to nine. And that early damage at the beginning of the game from two Thoughtseizes and Gataxian Probe starting to really add up now. Yep. Bernie does have one copy of Abrupt Decay in his deck, which would be very good right now. Going down to eight, a little bit dangerous. Two-turn clock as opposed to a three-turner. It's a beautiful underground sea. So after Van Meter does shuffle and present back to him, Bernie's gonna need a uh, Bernie's gonna need a little help here. He's in some serious trouble. Yeah. Especially when you're facing down Force of Will and Double Spell Pierce, it's very unlikely that you know any spell that Bernie does draw is going to resolve. It's gonna have to be a creature, and even then, no guarantee that that's gonna get in there. Here's a good taxi and broke to start things off. See, now Bernie has all this information. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm in a lot of trouble. Now yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Before, I would have just had to guess. <laughs> now I'm positive. Yeah. Spells are no good. See, Bernie, I, think, I believe you were land off that. He's, he's flipping between a wasteland and underground. See? Mm -hmm. He did draw a plow. That's not so bad. He's just going to pass the turn back. So Van Meter going to quickly untap. I'm going to take a draw. There's a plow on the Delver before he does draw. Again, double spell Pierce enforceable. You guys can see that at home, him flipping through those cards. Those are his options. He can pay for one spell Pierce. Can't pay for the other, but that would get two cards out of Van Meter's hand. So that feels like a win yeah. in this situation. It's just a question of what is Bernie actually trying to set up here. Mm -hmm. Now that he's used Force of Will here, I would imagine that we're going to be wastelanding inside the upkeep. Perhaps not. He must be trying to get this as something fairly expensive. Maybe Liliana the Veil with the ability to pay for Pierce, but allowing Chris to equip the Jitte this turn cuts off some outs. as then both creatures are lethal the following turn. Yeah. Time to equip up Stoneforge, getting into the red zone here. It's not really clear what he has in his deck to be able to beat the spell Pierce in Chris's hand. I guess it could be land into Snapcaster Plow. I guess that could be okay. That's something. Yeah. It certainly isn't Chase. Land into Snapcaster Plow. That would give him another turn. Yeah, that's one turn. Yeah. And then a removal spell for Stoneforge, and then we're fine, in yep. quotes. He just might be a little short of containing all of this. Again, he has Wasteland. He could Wasteland the one mana that Chris has available, but 
both the creatures are lethal, so mm -hmm. the one Jason in his hand doesn't let him do it. Yep. And That's he's going to come to that conclusion he's going to concede the game. So Chris Van Meter is going to win game number one here over Bernie Wynn. Blue, white, red, Delver up a game over Esper Deathblade. We'll move on to the sideboards here as those players will do the same. And we'll start on Bernie's side. Well, for starters, the, the fact that he, with the two Catassian probes in his deck, he doesn't have any copies of Metal Mage in the sideboard, to me is a near unforgivable sin. But <laughs> setting that aside, <laughs> He has an Abrupt Decay, a Spell Snare, two Surgical Extractions, two Vendillion Clicks, a Fluster Storm, a Lawan, a Diabolic Edict, a Sword of Feast of Famine, an additional Source of Plowshares, a Loam, two Zealous Persecutions, and a Crozan Grip. I suspect that we are going to see the certainly the additional Plow come in. I think we're going to want to see Life from the Loan, as Chris's list is very susceptible getting Wasteland locked. I think he's going to want the Extra Removal and the Diabolic Edict and the Abrupt Decay. It's possibly one zealous persecution as a way to fight over opposing true name nemesis. Uh, and I think, I, I don't think we're going to see Lawan or Vendelian Click or those kind of cards come in here. I don't think so either. As we take a look at Vanimeter's side, pretty stock stuff here from the Blue Red Delver player. One Red Elemental Blast, one Wear and Tear with Grim Lava Mancer, two copies of Rest in Peace, an additional true name nemesis to go along with this two in the main deck, the Sword of Feast and Famine, a Grafdigger's Cage, two Power Blast, two Ether Sworn Cannons, and three copies of Meddling Mage. Of the options here, true name certainly going to come in as we are playing some fair magic. I mean, the blast, I, you know, do you like blast in this matchup? It's not great. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's particularly good. Uh, Medley Mage, I don't love in this matchup. Graft Trigger's Cage, no. Sword of Feast and Famine, again, no. I'd rather have uh, I'd rather have Fire and Ice in this matchup than Feast and Famine. I don't think Feast and Famine's bad. It's just not exciting. Right. Um, that's really bad. I mean, I guess the Grim Love Mancer should probably come in. Given the fact that, you know, Bernie doesn't have a lot in the way of red uh, and blue cards, rather, and that with Wasteland and potentially Loam, Chris is likely to get cut off of red mana. Mm -hmm. I think the red blasts are incorrect to bring in. Okay. Well, we will, we will see. I mean, if Bernie's plan after board basically goes to spot removal plus Loam, then those red blasts are going to be... It's not very valuable in that kind of game. Not to out overvalue this one alone, but Bernie doesn't have very much in the way of blue cards to begin with. And he can certainly win without them. It's not They're not integral to what's going on. Well, both players will sideboard how they feel is best, and we'll see what they do bring in. But if you guys are just joining us, Cedric Hill is Patrick Sullivan, StarCityGames.com Open Series here in Columbus, Ohio. Already crowned the Standard Open champion, Mike Kenny, who will be filling in for the industry standard segment, talk about his red-white tokens deck, or Big Boros, as he deems it. Uh, very impressive past couple of weeks here for him, making the top eight in Indianapolis, kind of overshadowed by Owen Turtonwald's win, Andrew Shout's runner-up finish. But coming back here, a 10-round standard open, and don't forget, Indianapolis was an 11-round standard open, and hoisting the trophy here, defeating Kent Ketter in the finals, defeating a red-white devotion deck, that means we had eight sacred foundries in the top, mm -hmm. in the top match in our standard open, which was pretty crazy to even think about. Yeah, uh, going into the tournament, of course, it's mono black, mono blue, and then everything else. I mean, that's everyone's perception of where the metagame's at right now. But go back and go and look at the top four, especially. I mean, that if you're in that mono blue, mono black narrative right now, that top four throws it for a bit of a loop. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. And of course, you guys can join us on social media at SCG Live, hashtag SCGCOL. All weekend long, we'll be taking a look at the Born of the Gods spoilers yet again. Some more will be coming out this week, so that's definitely exciting. We'll also be crowning a champion legacy and giving away 21 months of premium overall. Yes. As we did figure out last weekend, right. it was 21, 3, 6, and then 12 throughout our quarters, semis, and finals later this evening. So it should be a, it should be a fun weekend. Looking forward to it here in Columbus. Always great to be back in the Greater Columbus Convention Center. Uh, uh, this, is a, this is a place I've played. I can't even count how many tournaments. And we got some pierogies coming, which I'm really yeah, excited about. We do have some pierogies coming for lunch. Ruben Bresler on the case. We had them yesterday. First time in my life I had them. The, I, can't, I still can't believe it's the first time in your life you've ever had a pierogi. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Well, it won't be my last. I'll yeah. tell you what. Yeah. There's a, great, uh, there's a great place across the street from the convention center called Barley's. Um, funny story. Ruben actually learned how to play magic from the, the son of the owner mm -hmm. of Barley's. So... 
Uh, it's a place that we want to keep in business, obviously. Yeah. And Ruben's, Ruben's as local as, his, as it gets. His yes. parents came by the convention center. They're apparently a five-minute drive from here. Yeah, they live right off of Broad Street, which is right by, uh, right by Ohio State. The campus is very close here. If you've never been to Columbus, great, great city. Great city. Not the biggest city. Uh, more of a college town, actually. Got the college yeah. town atmosphere. Yeah. Ruben grew up closer to this venue than I did from the New Jersey venue, which is pretty crazy to think you about. You grew up 15 minutes from the Jersey venue? Yeah. That is That is <laughs> insane. That is absolutely insane. But it is always great when we have tournaments here. We're going to be back here in this same building during the Origins Convention. We'll be running an Invitational that weekend. We've, we typically run an Open Series event when Origins does come to town. I know last year uh, we did a Standard and Legacy Open, of course, the year before as well. And we'll be doing one much bigger Invitational in Columbus in June. So and it's going to be to great to have a big event back at, at Origins. Yeah, I mean, for sure. For those of you who are historians of American Magic, used to be the site of Nationals, Origins Team Challenge, a lot of really significant early tournaments took place there. You know, Origins is not the competitive Magic event it used to be, although it's still a rather large convention. And for someone as nostalgic as myself, it's, it's great to see that that venue holds something big again. It's sad to me that Origins isn't as big as it used to be. That was a highlight when I was, you know, between 14 to 17 years old. That's what I was doing in the summer. Yeah. My, during my summer job, I had to take one vacation. And I said, boss, there's no way you can make me work these couple of days because I am, uh, I'm not sleeping for three or four days. I'm just going to play magic the whole time. If only I had known that, that you know, the wastelands were worth so much then as they are now. I <laughs> oh, feel I like have I, some regrets. Yeah, I feel like I missed the boat just a little bit there. I'm going to seek a taxi and probe. Giddy up. Mm. It's information time. Show me what you're working with. I don't think Chris wants to. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See a hand of Spell Pierce, Brainstorm, Stoneforge Mystic, and Swords of Plowshares along with the Wasteland, a Tundra, and a Volcanic Island. So Bernie will get all that information down at the cost of two life, but he will get a card. And we'll see how he wants to navigate the rest of the turns of this game. You are just so happy right now. I am quite happy. Look at him writing down the contents of his opponent's hand, all those valuable reactive cards he now knows about. Now there's a wasteland he knows about. He knows that Chris only has the one creature in his hand, so one spot removal spell is really good against his hand. He's aware of a spell pierce that he can play around. It slices, it dices. What can it do? There's a, now there's a cheap spell in the graveyard in case he finds one of his Snapcaster mages. Mm -hmm. Just... There's a Wasteland coming after the Scrubland. All right, that's going to bite the dust. All right, time for Bernie to draw a card. As Chris's turn was just playing Wasteland, so now second copy of Flood of Strand, and Bernie will pass the card, pass the turn back. Excuse me, Chris draws another Wasteland. And Chris trying to decide if he's willing to cast this Stoneforge Mystic into the jaw, so a potential counterspell for all that he knows. Also tapping out when his only protection is Spell Pierce is, is some risk. Mm hmm If Stoneforge. And that's good to go. At least the front part of it. We'll see what equipment he searches up. He goes by batter skull pretty quickly. He's going to sort of feast and famine. Mm -hmm. A little bit more reasonable for him cast in this game. Also very threatening against Bernie's control deck. Bernie would much rather get hit by a four power lifelinker than get hit by a green black sword. Mm -hmm. All right, and Bernie's going to sacrifice a flooded strand here, knowing that the shields are basically down unless Chris was able to peel off a force of will. Mm -hmm. Again, because of the taxing probe, he does know the contents of the hand. The mystery card, I think, right now is just Wasteland. Maybe you'll see a brainstorm here. That's what we are going to see. You know, foil Japanese, Mercadian mass brainstorm, no big deal. Trying to sculpt a perfect hand here. 
working with pretty solid information. He has Liliana in hand. He might try to stick that next turn. Oh, we might see two cards going back on top here. Maybe a sacrifice of the fetch land. We'll see. I think it's likely he's putting the wasteland back and looks like he does want to draw it. Yep. Uh, he does know that Van Meter only does have one white source of mana because of the old uh, yes. the old Gataxian probe. So he can actually wasteland that white source of mana and make it so that Chris has to actually draw a fetch land, maybe brainstorm into you know a white source of mana or ponder or what have you. But he can actually cut the white mana. Yep. We know Chris is drawing a fetch land so he can go get a backup tundra, mm -hmm. but with the information with the information that Bernie is currently working with, that wasteland could be valuable. Being updated right now, Todd Anderson does win his match. He moves on to three uh, four and one, excuse me, playing Jun Depps. He said he got a little bit wackier with his brew. Yeah, he's got a he's got some reanimation targets in the sideboard uh -oh. and some copies of reanimate or exhume or something i don't know what he's up to it's obviously working so far at least tundra maybe he doesn't want that yeah. to get potentially wastelanded yeah. as he knows that is in chris's hand so he's trying to figure out which land he's happiest to get wastelanded maybe true name oh liliana okay and liliana very good right now that's for sure Chris with no backup creature right now, so yeah. if he doesn't find a creature next turn, Liliana gets the plus, and then it's another edict in play. So we'll see if Chris is able to find a creature this turn. Well, a good start is Brainstorm, so that's where we're gonna begin. So two and three. Let's see if Van Meter is going to add to his hand. Looks like two fetch lands and another copy of Brainstorm. Yeah, this is it's a great spot here for Bernie. Yep. If he gets to untap with no creatures on Chris's side of the table, he could start to do some real damage. Well, as long as he's got some cards, he's perfectly fine discarding. Van Meter going to sacrifice his Scalding Tarn, make it a perfect Brainstorm. We'll see which land he does search up. Will it be blue-white or blue-red? It's going to be blue-red. Bernie's mana base is actually stretched pretty thin. I know that he has to be really careful about what lands he's searching up mm -hmm. with his fetches because he actually has a lot of needs colored mana-wise. Van Meter with another copy of Brainstorm. I think he might be looking for a bolt. A bolt or any creature. I mean, even a Grim Lava Mancer would be fine. Just something to threaten the Liliana next turn. Yeah. He did not find what he was looking for. Forcible spell, spell Pierce and an Arid Mace are the cards that are added to his hand via Brainstorm. So he's going to have to put two of these back and then draw one of them the next turn. And this is a hand that's very susceptible to Liliana plussing as well. It's nearly all reactive cards. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to decide what two cards to put back, too. You see a hand there, Spell Pierce in the Grip Force Will, a couple blue cards, a couple copies of Wasteland. But problem number one is the Planeswalker that's on the table. And when he gets to untap with it, take a draw step here, see if he can find some action. He does have a Brainstorm hanging out in his hand, so maybe that's where he'll start his turn. And that's what he's going to do. See if Van Meter wants to fight over this. Again, he's got a Spell Pierce. He can tap Bernie out. He can cast a Force of Will. Bernie does have a lot of cards in his hand, though. Mm -hmm. Casting a Force of Will on a Brainstorm, especially when there's Liliana in play, does seem quite dangerous, so he's going to let that resolve. You can understand where what, what Chris is thinking, though. You know, he doesn't want to get wasteland in this turn. It's also how long is he going to grip on to these counter spells when he's facing down Liliana, potentially pulsing every turn, but he's going to hold off for now. And Liliana creates a unique sub game that we don't see a ton of in Legacy anymore, especially in a matchup like this where, you know, you have to really weigh a lot of things now that that card's in play. You know, the way that you go about playing your lands, you know, counter spells, there's, there are a lot of different decisions to make. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on both players. It's not, it's not just Chris. Yeah. Bernie as well needs to figure out how he's going to sculpt the next couple of turns. Bernie ready to discard with Liliana. Puts a Tundra down on his side, too. Chris puts on his. I heard Mesa might be the choice. That's the one that's brought forward. That is what it's going to be. 
So Tundra and Air and Mesa are both going to go down, but more importantly, Liliana's going to check up to two, which means that if Chris does draw a creature, it is taken care of. Chris really needs a lightning bolt right now. Yep. And I felt that's what he was digging for. Previously, he wasn't able to find it, just found a lot of reactive cards, as you did mention. I think he would have been happy to find anything that pressured that Liliana. Bolt would have been ideal, but yeah. just a castable creature would have done some amount of work. We see part of the reason he was happy to discard the Air and Mesa, just draw a Scalding Tarn for the turn. I mean, he almost needs to just start off this turn by brainstorming again. He's going to start by sacrificing Scalding Turn to get a fresh three, because he knows the top card of his deck. Right. From the previous brainstorm, he put two back, drew Scalding Tarn, which was the newest one. He knows the top card, and now he wants to, you know, really try to dig here for something of relevance. Well, that losing that shuffle there is a little rough when his hand is as bad as it is. Almost but, assuredly. Yeah. I guess it's he's kind of rocking a hard place right now. He could find some real something really nice though with a brainstorm. So let's see what he finds. Two, three. It was a red card, but it is not a lightning bolt. It was a pyroblast to go along with a delver to ponder. It looks like or delver and spell pierce. Excuse me. So that's not it. Now no. he might be in the situation now where he's got to play delver just so Liliana eats it. And hope. I mean, if that. If, if Bernie has a removal spell, then things get really bad. Yeah, we might actually see a fight over a removal spell at that point. Just look at the way Liliana can affect the game. Yeah. And it, it's so taxing on all of Chris's resources. Chris debating about doing it, casting this Delver, but his hand doesn't really allow him to do anything else. He can't. He certainly can't say go. So, even though you know there's some risk with this play, I don't think his hand really affords him the option to do much else. And you see, Bernie. This is where he's going to fight over this. As if he doesn't have to minus Liliana, he can plus again. He's probably pretty confident there's no lightning bolt waiting from Chris, so he can really start draining. Chris's defenses and leave extra edicts in play as well. Yeah, that's really, we've said rock in a hard place multiple times and still in it. Yeah. Is he willing to use two cards to fight over this <laughs> yeah. when Bernie has an edict in play, but Chris doesn't really have an alternative. Yeah, I don't I think mean. he has an alternative either. I think he has to counter this and force Liliana to eat this. I think that's what really happens. He's got Power Blast if it's going to be a counter war, which is fine. But Bernie's going to quickly untap. And if you're Bernie, you're obviously thrilled about this exchange. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think you want to lose your Liliana, but at the same time, like, you know, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do, I think. And, you know, what happens if he finds another removal spell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Abrupt Decay being the best of the bunch. There's a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, that's that about does Yeah, this it. is really... No, I, mean, I mean, this can be Pyroblasted. I think he sure. does have to Pyroblast it. Yeah. Because he obviously can't... He can't counter the Swords with Pyroblast, so you have to you have to start by countering the Snapcaster. Mm -hmm. You just aren't, you aren't really left with an option. And this is all just a fight over Liliana at this point. That's right. all this exchange is, is... And now finally Bernie says, okay, fine. I will use my Liliana to take care of your Delver. You've expended all these resources to make it so I don't have to use Liliana. I'm perfectly fine making that exchange and passing the turn back. So we'll see how Chris does now that all of this stuff has happened. And now it's Pierce Plow against whatever Bernie can put together. I believe a, a couple of copies of True Name Nemesis are over there on Bernie's side. And this is a, a weakness now of the Blue White Red Delver deck is a resolved True Name Nemesis is, you know, you can race it. Yeah. You got a Pyroblast on the spot, and that's really the only way this deck has to fight over it. The question is, Bernie willing to cast it? He's going to start by killing a Snapcaster Mage. And if you're Chris, you say that's fine. Oh, is he getting the Cataxia Probe? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Targets his probe. It's all about value, Patrick. Oh. And if he draws a land off of this, he knows the coast is clear. Yep. Probe you. Alternate cost, go down to 14. This is your dream. Uh, someone pinched me. <laughs> 
sees the coast is clear. Let's see if he does draw land. Oh, oh he boy. does. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I'll oh. cast, I guess I'll cast my true name nemesis now. Bernie, you're too good to me. Look at this. I swear, folks, this is, this is not scripted. <laughs> this is not how we drew it up. And now there is uh, the coast is clear, true name nemesis. I choose you, Mr. Van Meter. With the information, he was able to make a better yeah. decision. Mm -hmm. ah. But he had to take two, so there's that. There's a big cost. Yeah. There's that. Pretty nice turn there from one. Pretty nice, you know, set of turns, honestly. Yeah. The way that he has set this game up to get into this position here. The Van Meter takes a draw, another copy of Spell Pierce quickly passes the turn back. And you see that we're about at 15 minutes on the clock. And at that point, you know, this game is, uh, this game is getting away from Chris. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the last thing we want to see, now this game is really getting away from Chris, I guess. I mean, back-to-back -back spell pierces will take care of this, which, you know, Chris drew the second one last turn. Bernie will pay for this one. Spell pierce will mm -hmm. take care of this. But he's still doing great. Yeah, I mean, it's plow against nothing. Yeah. Now, true name against nothing. I think Bernie has a zealous persecution in his hand right now, which so. covers Chris if, in the event that he draws a true name nemesis of his own. Well, it's time for runner, runner. I think it was just lightning bolt past the turn back. Bernie's going to draw a card. In for three, put Van Meter down to 11. And we have seen this before. Play an and now Mason. if I'm Bernie, I'm definitely using Wasteland here because I, you had to be worried about Batter Skull. Skull. I don't know if that got discarded uh, many turns ago or something, but. Now Chris searched for, Chris searched for Sword of Feast and Famine with right. Stone Forge, so Batter Skull is still a very live draw here. And it would force Bernie to actually put the brakes on with the Streaming Nemesis. He wouldn't be able to win the race then. Manimator takes a draw. And he's going to pack it up, pack it in. So, Burning One's going to tie it up between him and Van Meter. So, we're going to go to a third and final one between these two players. Esper Deathblade versus Blue Eye Red Delver. Two uh, pretty exciting games thus far. You're seeing, you know, game one, you kind of saw the Delver game plan get executed of, you know, Bernie was just a little short. Almost had it all tied up, but but, but couldn't quite get it done. That game, Chris got one of the threat light draws that Delbert gets on occasion, and Bernie was able to use removal long enough, fend off Chris long enough to start developing his own powerful stuff. Well, let's see if players are going to change anything here. You see Van Meter's already gone back to his side, but he's going to be on the play this game. We're about 13 minutes left on the clock here as we're going to start game number three. Don't want to see this one end in a draw either. We saw our last match almost end in a draw. Uh, due, unfortunately, to an untimely game loss. Um, however, and you just, you want both players to maybe pick up the pace here a little bit. They, I'm sure neither one of them wants to get a draw in this scenario, but there's a lot of back and forth here with the shuffling, the brainstorming, and posturing around spell pierce and days and force of will and how you want the course of the game to go. It's not a, it's not short. No. That's for sure. And there's so many, every decision has so many conse potential consequences because there's, a wide range of reactive cards in each player's deck. Mm -hmm. So not easy magic to play by any stretch of the imagination. And certainly not easy magic to play quickly. No. That's the big part is you, all your decisions are magnified and it, it's you have to think about everything the entire time. So that's not something you can do really fast. Yeah, it looks like Chris appears to be removing the wear tear. He hasn't seen the equipment yet. So I can see a reason to do that. This is true. And there's no, uh, well, I guess there is Stoneforge Mystic hanging out. So. Four of them. Yeah. Feels like he can, if there is Stoneforge Mystic in Bernie's deck, which of course there is, I think he's under the opinion of, well, I think I'll still be okay. Yeah. We'll see if that does. Does come and there's true. only there's only so many reactive cards you can put in your deck. Also, when you're facing against Liliana too, that's a risk. Also, yeah, of course. As you become more susceptible to just getting plussed when you don't have enough proactive cards. All right. Well, both players will be underway here shortly. Make sure if you guys do want to chat with us at SCG Live hashtag SCGCOL for your tweets. We're in round five of nine here in Legacy. And we do appreciate you guys joining us. A lot of options out there on this busy Sunday, up to and including Seahawks football. 
I, I didn't know that you were on that bandwagon now. Well, I abandoned the Browns because, you know, after 27 years, almost 28 here in two months, I've, I've, I've had Believe enough. land. No. I thought that was a thing. No. It's, it's too much now. I don't like to change allegiances. I'm very loyal. <laughs> but you can only take so much in life, Patrick. Sure. You can only take losing for so long. And we are quickly underway here. Van Meter with a Delver. Both players kept very, very fast. And now here's a Death Right Shaman. So Premier One drops in the format. They come out. Yep. Chris with an excellent start here of Delver Secrets and Stoneforge Mystic. Bernie with his own Premier One drop with Death Right Shaman. Yeah, he'll be accelerating. Van Meter really wanted that to flip, obviously, to have a perfect start. And this is another copy of Delver. We'll see if he's going to be able to set it up. Looking at a hand of Pierce, Stoneforge, and two lands, uh, if appearances are uh, appear to be correct here. Yep. Well, bring his draw card. He'll have access to three mana on this turn if he wants it. There's Flood of Strand. Let's see what he wants to do. Got a Brainstorm. That's most stuff. Just going to pass the turn back. All right, Delver, show me what you're working with. Trigger number one. Ding, 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 ding. Flip this one, too. Now, the big question is, does Van Meter actually want to draw days? Yep. He can just shuffle it away before he draws if he's feeling so inclined. Yeah, I saw him almost add it to his hand. And it looks like we're here before the draw step. Here's a brainstorm. I think the big question here is if you're Bernie, I think I know what he's trying to set up. Actually, I take that back. I really don't. I thought maybe he might want to try to set up a Zell's Persecution, but they've already flipped. Yeah. So it's not going to work. He may be searching for a Prop Decay, potentially. He said one of those in his list? One in the board as well. Okay. He wants to resolve this brainstorm right now. So Days is going to go to Van Meter's grip. Van Meter more than happy to draw that card. So that's the information that Bernie doesn't know about. Attack for six is going to put Wynn down to 18 for now. We'll see how low he's actually going to go. Yeah. And it's really critical for Bernie to be able to resolve a removal spell this turn as... Chris's hand of Spell Pierce and Days is going to keep him off some of his more expensive action. Can I remove a land? This might be the Decay that you mentioned. We'll see. Yep, that's an abrupt Decay to take care of one of the Delvers. Can't count on that one with Spell Pierce. Oh, it was really important for Bernie to have that card yeah, right there. Yeah, it really, really was. He was underneath the gun quite a bit here, and now he's able to catch up. Let's keep in mind, Chris doesn't have a lot going on with his hand, with the exception, you know, of what's on the board right now. Bernie's able to find removal spells for these threats or present his own threats. And Chris is left with a couple, you know, soft permission spells. Mm -hmm. uh, he's really all in on what he has on the board at this point. The choice is Jitte here with the Stoneforge Mystic. Not Batter Skull. Don't get me wrong, Chris's opening is very good here, but... Oh, I mean, he's off to a fantastic start, especially when you're kind of under the gun as far as the clock is concerned. And I think everything is beautiful here for Chris, but it, it, we had a long game to play here. Yeah. There's a trop. I see Bernie rushing a little bit here, trying to figure out what spell to cast. Looks like he's going to go maybe with a Stoneforge Mystic this go around. Yeah, he's oh, just gonna, just pass. gonna pass again. Very looks like he's has Snapcast from Agent Hand. That would be quite good right now. So well, I mean, he knows about days. It's pretty bad for a Snapcaster to get days when his only spell is Abrupt Decay. That's true. Back here for three. All right, he's gonna take the damage. So maybe he's got a maybe he has a greater plan. We'll see. Maybe he's happy to, to bleed out this daze. Mm -hmm. To try to set up something even bigger. But... Gonna remove Delver to gain two life. Gonna go up to 14. Now here's a brainstorm on the end stop. Now this is a little bit problematic. I don't think this is a bad play by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, it's an end step brainstorm. He's gonna have to redraw one of these cards, potentially two of them if he doesn't have a fetch land. So we'll see. Van Meter looks like he wants to spell pierce this. He says that's fine, giving away a little bit of information, it feels like.
So two cards are going to get placed back rather quickly. So there's the, there those go. Is that still done? Chris says yes. Bernie puts his brainstorm in the graveyard, takes a draw, put a delta into play. Again, we know he's Stoneforge Mystic. We know he has a copy of Snapcaster Mage in his hand. Jite is going to come into play, it looks like now. So now he has the ability to Snapcaster Abrupt Decay and not care about these. Yeah. Which is why we probably saw him wait so long. Right. Now there is Snapcaster Mage. Question I have for you, what are you Abrupt Decaying? It is either the Jute or the Delver. You may be happy to trade your board with uh, for the Stoneforge. If you know if he were to equip mm -hmm. uh, the Stoneforge and attack, you know you block with your Snapcaster Mage. Everything trades. I think Bernie would be happy with that exchange right now, assuming Chris doesn't draw a creature, basically this turn. All right. Take a draw. Eric Mesa. Still on Days Pierce in Chris's hand. Yeah. Stoneforge going to get equipped. Attack. Yep. This is the trade that you talked yep. about. That happens immediately. Two counters going to go on. He's going to finish off Deathrite Shaman. I think if you're Bernie, yeah, this is a win right now. Oh, sure. Th certainly that exchange given the, is a win. Certainly, given the way Chris's hand is composed, this yeah. is excellent. And Bernie's draw sets, pound for pound, are a lot more powerful from here. I agree. I mean, it feels like at this point, Chris is... The only thing that Chris can really draw that's great is True Name. That's yeah. what it feels like he's kind of pitching himself, pitching to hold himself, excuse me, into. Batter's Call is also a pretty good draw. And, you know, if Batter's Call is a good draw, good draw, excuse me, that means Stoneforge is probably a good draw, too. Yeah. But his great draws, they are few and far between, it feels right. like. And Bernie will search out a Batter's Call. And this is, you know, Chris has no answer to this to this Batter's Skull. Not in hand. Mm -hmm. It's not even clear if there's a wear tear left in his deck. It looked like he side where it out. You see Deathrite Chop is going to join the party now, too. And then, and you know, don't underestimate the speed of Bernie's clock at this point. There's a lot of spells in that graveyard. Another copy of Days. Well, this has been a really well crafted game by Bernie. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But you know, one thing that this game does is it just really shows the power of Abrupt Decay. Yes. That's the big one to me. It's, it's such a critical cyborg card against these soft permission decks because there's cheap permanence and soft permission to protect them. And Abrupt Decay just gives you the time that you need. Source of Plowshare, the draw here for Van Meter. When just immediately drew his card, I think he had another Trinity Nemesis to his hand, but he has no, no, no inclination to put that into play. Right. He's going to put a Germ Token in. There's BBD on the Batter Skull. You see, Wen is really moving here. He knows he knows about the time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, he, and you, can, you know, I'm sure on his side, he can sense that he's probably got this game now, sensing some weakness on Van Meter's hand, and everyone at home can see that he really doesn't have very much action. He's got double days, spell pierce, source of plowshares, really not much going on. Now Bernie's really turning the corner. Here's true name Nemesis. The fun police has shown up. It can play around double days appropriately with Death Rite and Polluted Delta. You see Chris is going to take a look at the graveyard here. There's a land. Yep. So he has to say that that resolves. His daces aren't going to get anything done. Yeah, and, and after what looked to be a fantastic, I don't want to say unbeatable because clearly it is beatable, yeah. but a great start by Van Meter, boy, have things changed here. Well, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there is a lot of pressure on these blue, white, red Delver decks to continue to draw removal spells mm -hmm. against or sorry, to continue to draw creatures, rather, against decks with a bunch of removal spells. And there's not that many threats. I mean, there's 10 in the main deck, maybe a Lava Mancer, an extra True Name Nemesis in the sideboard. And in the matchups where your initial creature is killed, then you have to spend time cantripping and trying to find extra threats. Sometimes you don't find them at all, and sometimes the time that you spend trying to find them allows your opponent to set up shop. Now, one thing, it looks like Van Meter made a mistake here on this turn. Uh, you can see a little bit of frustration because he's showing double days. But what he wanted to do is he wanted to sword the Deathrite Shaman. And yeah. then in response to the Death Rite Shaman activation, days, days the uh, the true name, and then days it again, days it again. Uh, but what he actually ended up doing is he let the swords resolve. He let the swords resolve, and so as a result, or excuse me, he let he let the 